Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. It's Shooty versus Whitmer. The stage is now set for what will be a showdown to become Michigan's next governor. And both candidates are wasting no time going on the attack. But first, tracking scattered storms and eyes to the skies as Paul Gross is tracking some wet weather heading our way. That weather tops our news at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasimi. Let's take a live look outside for you. This is the view from our Romulus, Detroit and Mount Clemens sky cams. Meteorologist Paul Gross is here now with a look at what we can expect. Some pop up showers are possible, Paul. Yep, and they're like starting to pop now. You can see in our sky cam here, though, we are getting some sunshine. So as promised, the clouds did break up a bit and temperatures have responded. Metro is already at 80 degrees. Howell at 78, Monroe at 78. Most areas are in the upper 70s. Now we're going to be a little cooler in the thumb due to Lake Huron. Port Huron's at 73 degrees right now. So there's really not much going on. This is not rain here. But if you look back, you see these little little dots here. We're starting to see like you see one right there just south of Novi. You see another one over here, another one over here. And that's going to be the process this afternoon. This these little things just kind of popping up here and there. No rhyme or reason to them. And some of those could become thunderstorms too. We're not expecting severe weather, but lightning itself can be a danger. Looks like a low to mid 80s for a high. We clear things out tonight, but another cold front comes in tomorrow. We'll talk about that in just a few, Everod. All righty, Paul, thank you. Right now we want to get to breaking news just into the local four newsroom. More charges are expected for Nathaniel Abraham one day after he was arrested for indecent exposure. Now he allegedly ran from deputies and assaulted one while they were taking him into custody. Back in 1997, then 11 years old, he was convicted of murder. He was released eight years later, but went back to jail after he was caught stealing drugs. In decision 2018 now, voter turnout in Tuesday's primary election shattered records, going back as least, at least as far as 1978. That is according to election officials. More than 2 million votes were cast, and those numbers likely help account for precincts running out of ballots at polling places in Oakland County and elsewhere. In the meantime, results are in for one of the biggest races. We're talking about the race for Michigan's next governor. Gretchen Whitmer won the Democratic nomination, and Bill Schuette won the Republican nomination. Local Forge Rob Maloney joining us live now this afternoon and Rod both candidates are speaking out today. Yeah, they're talking uh, as you would expect, you know, they get right up back on it uh, immediately after the, uh, you know, the victory parties last night, which didn't last all that long. Um, we'll take a step back just for a second and we'll talk about those voting problems. Uh, I'll tell you about like a place like Oak Park. Um, they ran out of ballots last night. They were dependent on the county telling them how many they should have. And it turns out they had almost 30% turnout last night, which would be almost double of what they saw four years ago. And that's how they usually measure these things where it's every four years are the in between elections. And so they were expecting 18, 19% had enough ballots for that. When 30% shows up, that caused problems. Uh, people had had to wait for them to print out ballots there and they got them. There were other places that had uh, issues as well. Um, and the uh, Oakland County uh, Executive's Office is looking into all of this and looking to figure out what precisely happened. As for the Whitmer shooty race, um, they, they came out and were happy to talk about their platforms today because in essence, that's what they'll be talking about for the next 90 days. Let's hear from the candidates. But we have work to do. I'm going to fix those roads and clean up our drinking water, make sure our kids have great schools, and every one of us has a path to a high wage skill. These are the things that I hear from people at the dinner table as well as from businesses in our state. Tax cuts mean more jobs, and that's why I want to roll back the grand home tax increase. And then secondly, we need to cut auto insurance rates. You know that we have the highest auto insurance rates in America, on average about $1,000 more than any other state in this nation. That has to end. Now, uh, Bill Schuette said that Gretchen Whitmer would be a step back for the state. Gretchen Whitmer wants to throw Bill Schuette a retirement party. It's going to be quite the battle. Um, we also are hearing from people who wanted to vote last night and did not get that opportunity. Coming up on Local 4 News at 5 and 6, we'll be talking to somebody who was in just that position. Reporting live downtown, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All righty, thank you, Rod. One of the biggest and most closely watched race in Metro Detroit was the 13th Congressional District. That was the election to fill the seat that was vacated by Congressman John Conyers. Now, current numbers have former state rep Rashida Tlaib as the projected winner of the Democratic nomination for the full term. However, in an interesting turn of events, the race to finish Conyers' term ending in January 
It's too close to call right now. Right now, Tlaib is on track to make history as the first Muslim American woman in Congress. Voters are also choosing the Republican and Democratic candidate to fill Congressman Dave Trott's seat in the 11th Congressional District. On the Republican side of things, businesswoman Lena Epstein has just won. On the Democratic side, Haley Stevens came out on top, beating a field of five candidates. The votes came in just moments ago. President Trump sent a congratulatory tweet to Farmington Hills businessman and veteran John James for his win over Sandy Pensler. The president endorsed James last week. Now he's gearing up to take on longtime Senator Debbie Stabenow in the November general election. Last night's victory makes James the first black Republican nominee for a major statewide office in more than three decades. And voter turnout throughout Macomb and Oakland and Wayne counties had they had the chance to renew the millage for the bus smart bus system. Smart is the only regional public transit system in north in southeast Michigan. Wayne County approved the increased millage for smart and over in Oakland County voters passed the millage by more than 50 points and the smart millage passed in Macomb County by a very slim margin just 23 votes there. If any of the counties voted against the renewal smart service would end there but all again passed. Meanwhile, in Ohio, where the decision is too close to call in a special election for the state's 12th congressional district. However, both President Trump and the Republican candidate Troy Balderson are calling it a Republican victory. The Democrat Danny O'Connor refusing to concede and promising to continue the fight. Balderson has less than a 1% lead over his Democrat opponent. The race might not be officially called for a few days. And overall, it was a record setting primary for women across the country. There are 11 female nominees for governor and at least 182 for the House of Representatives. In Georgia, Stacey Abrams won the Democratic Party primary, getting her one step closer to becoming the first black female governor of a state. However, a Democrat hasn't won the governor's seat in Georgia since 2003. We do encourage you to stick with us here on Local 4 and on ClickOnDetroit.com. We're going to have a full recap of all the election results there for you all day long, both here and online. Vice President Mike Pence is set to visit Michigan today, visiting Grand Rapids for a Michigan Republican Party rally just one day after the primary election. Pence is scheduled to speak at 630 tonight at the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel right alongside Michigan's candidates for governor and U.S. Senate. U.S. House Representative Chris Collins of New York has been indicted on insider trading charges. The Justice Department saying the Republican congressman is facing charges of securities fraud, wire fraud, and false statements. The charges are related to Innate Immunotherapeutic, which is an Australian biotechnology company, where Collins served on the board of directors. Collins, who was the first sitting member of Congress to endorse President Trump, turned himself in on Wednesday morning. You are looking live now at pictures where a press conference is officially underway. We are monitoring this for you. We do expect to learn more soon, and we'll have that for you a little bit later here on Local 4. Paul Manafort's former assistant, Rick Gates, is back on the witness stand today. Yesterday, Gates confessed that he stole from his boss and cheated on his wife. Although Manafort's team feels they did well on Tuesday, the government says their case is still fortified by document proof. Pete Williams explains from the court building in Alexandria, Virginia. It's day three on the witness stand for Rick Gates, Paul Manafort's former right-hand man, his trusted aide who now admits stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from his former boss during the years they worked together. Some of that money, he said, helped him carry on an affair in London that he hid from his wife, a secret life, Manafort's lawyers called it. He said he created false financial documents to help a Las Vegas investor friend. Gates said he repeatedly embezzled money from Manafort's overseas bank accounts to pay his bills. Asked why, he said, I was, in essence, living beyond my means. After a day of aggressive questioning, Manafort's lawyer, Kevin Downing, in a rare public statement, seemed satisfied. Mr. Manafort had a great day. The defense hopes to paint Gates as the real villain responsible for the crimes that prosecutors charge Manafort with committing. But in a case built on bank and tax records, muddying up Gates may not work. I think it probably was not enough to tank the case. There are enough documents that have already put, been put into evidence that corroborate what he has to say. Prosecutors disclosed that after Manafort left the Trump campaign, he continued asking for favors from Gates, who stayed on to work on the Trump inauguration. He emailed Gates to say that a banker who helped him get a loan should be considered for Secretary of the Army. And emailed again later to say the banker and his son should get tickets to the Trump inaugural ceremony. 
It's apparent that Robert Mueller's prosecutors value Gates highly as a witness. In return for his guilty plea earlier this year, they've agreed not to object when his lawyers ask for a sentence of probation, even though he could face years in prison for all the crimes he's admitted committing. Pete Williams, NBC News, Alexandria, Virginia. All righty. Thank you, Pete. We do want to encourage you to stick with Local 4 and click on Detroit.com for updates on the Manafort trial throughout the day. We have a Local 4 update about that missing seven year old girl from Highland Park that police were searching for all morning long. Well, the good news is Simone Hunter has been found safe. She was actually with her father on Detroit's west side. But again, that missing seven year old girl, Simone Hunter, has been found safe. So to come here on Local 4 News at noon, stunning images from the UK. We're going to show you how this fire NATO came to be. But first, wildfires continue to rip across the west. How climate change is fueling those record breaking infernos. 